Remember, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. This is the traditional formula for the imposition of ashes. You can also use a newer one, repent and believe in the gospel. I prefer to use that stark traditional formula. It certainly gets your attention, especially when joined with the ashes that are placed on our foreheads. Remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. On the face of it, a grim message, a reminder of our limits and our mortality. But it strikes me that this day and this act and the season that is now offered to us by the Lord as a gift, this season of Lent, is not just about our grim mortality. It is, I would like to suggest today, a day and a season about humility, but also about grace. And a day that is about solidarity and the new, renewed life to which the Lord invites us. Certainly, the image of ashes or dust is an image of our humility, our acknowledgement that we are not gods, that we are mere mortal creatures. It's not such a terrible thing to say also if you consider the way in which it is offered to us in the book of Genesis, which speaks of dust or dirt, but does so in terms of expressing really the truth of creation. We're, ter we're told about the creation of Adam. And in Hebrew, that name, which also stands really for all humanity, is taken from the word that means dirt or earth, Adama. And so Adam, like uh, the potter shapes the clay, Adam is shaped from the dirt, from the earth, a part of this truth of creation. In some ways, it's a rather radical assertion on the part of the Hebrew scriptures because in the ancient world, many religions had the notion that the gods, the good gods anyway, they were spiritual, they lived in the heavens. The dirt, the earth, creation, material world was seen as somehow inferior. And yet the Hebrew scriptures boldly proclaim that all of reality, all of the universe, physical and spiritual, material and spiritual, all of this flows from the heart of the Father. All of this comes to us from the Creator. All of this is in some sense an expression of the heart of God. And so while it is humbling to acknowledge that we are not God, that we are flawed, that we are mortal, there is also, even in that admission, a kernel of hope because we are creatures of a God who is love itself and who delights in his creation in all its variety. But it is also a day about grace because we learn in that same book of Genesis and throughout the Bible that God takes a particular delight in the human family. For the Lord who has shaped us from the dirt, we're told, then breathes life into that dirt, into Adam, into us. In the scriptures, we, wind or breathing, this is the imagery associated with the Holy Spirit. And so we're told in the very beginning the Spirit of the Lord, the breath of God, moved upon the waters. And now we see in creation how God fills us with the breath of life. It's the same imagery, by the way, that we'll use here at this altar in the Holy Mass. For as we pray the words of consecration, receiving the bread and the wine that now will become the body and blood of Christ, I will lean over and I will breathe upon those elements, recalling that gift of God's Spirit, the life 
that flows from the heart of the Father. And so today is not just grim news, as serious as it may be, because we acknowledge our sin and our mortality against a horizon of grace, of the truth of God's love, and of the truth that the God who has breathed life into the dust can breathe life into the dust again. So that in Christ and by his grace, we mortal creatures no, need, no longer need to fear the power of death, but know the truth of his resurrection and his promise to us that the God who has formed us will reform us as we join ourselves to his beloved son. That gift of his son, the one who looks like us but reveals to us our nature. He reveals the heart of the father who is love and he reveals to us who we are made in the image and likeness of God. Not so much about those appearances but the, the heart of the matter the truth that we are loved and we are invited into love. This grace also bespeaks partnership for our loving God wishes to partner with us. Have you ever noticed that the story of humanity begins in a garden? Why not in a forest or a pristine jungle? Why a garden? Why is it so important that our story begins there? And of course, the story will culminate there in the burial of Jesus in a garden. Why a garden? Because a garden requires our participation. Like a forest or a jungle, it deals with the things of God, with sunshine and water and soil and green things. We don't make them. But a garden requires our labor, our care. We cultivate, we prepare, we guard. We water. Our loving God wishes to draw us to his heart, to draw us into partnership, into communion. And this is where that third item comes in. So today, it's about humility. It's about the grace of a God who walks with us in the journey of life, who wishes to partner with us, and the truth that this God wishes by the grace of his Son to transform our hearts to reform us even now, to be his renewed humanity, remade in the image and likeness of his son who reveals that love and compassion to the world. And so it's significant, I think, that we come to this place for ashes together. This is an act of the church, of the community, of the communion of the Lord. Because in a very real sense, the Lord gives us each other as a gift and calls us to live as he lived with compassion and solidarity one for another. And so certainly this season of Lent is about our own personal repentance for our sins and our humility before God, but it is also about the Lord's desire to inflame our hearts with that same compassionate, life-giving love one for another. And so I pray that for each and every one of us today, this imposition of ashes, this speaking of dust and returning to dust, will pierce our egos and our sins, make us humble and repentant before God, make us aware of and grateful for the grace that he pours forth in our Lord Jesus Christ, and make our hearts now willing and able to treat others all those we meet with love, compassion, and solidarity.